New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Ebro in the Morning. The beautiful Laura Styles. She's going to be even more beautiful after she gets rhinoplasty. Soon come. <laughs> we'll broadcast live from Laura's nose job. Ooh, big. I'm big. not This big that. talk. Major talk. Um, and the, and the amazing Lodestar himself. I don't. Rosenberg. Please don't call me Lodestar. I'm still Because I'm still confused about what that whole thing is. It's a, it's, Mike Pence used it a lot. That's like a word. It means North Star. Like, it means like the, it's like a, an old term. But he used it a lot. And there's an op-ed in the New York Times. That word is used in this op-ed in the New York Times. The op-ed in the New York Times is outing all of sort of Trump administration Dirty laundry. I have not read it, so this is I'm just getting headlines. But the big story is that the word Lodestar was used because whoever wrote the op-ed is anonymous, doesn't want to say who they are. And so now people are suggesting that that is Pence who wrote it. Pence who wrote it. Even though to me it seems like that would be used more as something to throw people <sighs> off the scent, isn't it? Right. A distraction tactic. That's what it seems like. And off the scent of what exactly? Who, off the scent of whoever actually wrote this. Although, why does even anyone have to hide anymore? I mean, literally exactly every single my day. Point. Every day there's a new book, a new th- article, a new thing about... The, the, well, just the because Bob they don't want Woodward. to lose their job. No, I get that, Laura Styles. But what Rosenberg is trying to articulate is, is we already know that these are a bunch of scumbag criminals. Like, whether the person's anonymous or not, mm-hmm. the whole thing is rotten. The whole thing is rotten. Like so badly, too. And he's sitting there still fighting it every single day. It's it's impossible. Well, he has to. You know what I mean? He's got to stick to the script until, look, I'll say it again. Unless they're going to put him in jail or unless they're going to, he's going to lose a lot of money or both. It doesn't even matter. He doesn't care about impeachment. He'll be martyred. He'll he'll start the Trump television network. And you'll tune in every day and he'll be on there with him and all his crazy people talking all their ish that they talk. I got to tell you that he may be he may be worse. <laughs> if he just loses. This this Don uh, my dad was read an article and we were discussing this the other day. If he loses Ebro and then does something like you're you're saying, becomes this big huge media person again. Yeah. Yeah. He could be more dangerous. He already dangerous. did it. How, he, of course he could do it again. But he could be more dangerous because he won't have any of the restrictions of being president. So the racism can be completely out. And he can, tr- he can truly the racism, galvan- the- galvanize racist people in this open way. It could be so scary we don't even know. <laughs> His influence could be bigger, not as president. Because the, the office of the presidency actually keeps him somewhat in check right as as these books are put are, are putting out he's the ebro did you hear that he supposedly called mattis one day and was like we have to assassinate assad or whoever he said they had they have to assassinate and yeah. and, and mattis was like yeah, yeah we got you and hung up the phone and was like yeah we're not doing that anyways <laughs> like he gets ignored by other people who keep him in place when if he's not president anymore ebro his influence is a terrifying thought He's going to reveal any secret he has if necessary. Oh, what? Right. And make up things, of right. course. Let me tell you about fake news. Let me tell you what they're trying to do. This is what they're trying to say, and these are the plans that they have. But, but he already says, so, you guys, he already says those things, man. But and while he's more, on the job. It could get so and why much are we worse. Worried about, why are we worried about racists being galvanized? Why is that a concern? I mean, they're dangerous. As if they're not already. Or they haven't been in the past. Why? Why is that something I should be afraid you of? You don't think it's. Bro. You don't think the idea is scary of it getting worse. Nobody's than it is afraid now? of no racist fam. Well, people are afraid of not being able to get jobs. So if racists start going, <laughs> you know what? We're not hiring you because you're black, straight up and down, and it becomes a, a something that is across the nation. Yeah, I could see people who are afraid of that, but. Physically afraid of racism? I, well, I never said physically afraid, no afraid, but yes, I am afraid. I, I think it is a scary thought that Donald Trump and <laughs> this current world that we live in could influence more and more people 
to be to, blatant about not hiring or not, not to, allowing people to buy homes. But also, when you say blatant. Or get loans. No, I don't look at everything like that. I look at it as everything across the board. You act like, we act like, uh, are you going to act like racist uh, hate crimes aren't up too? They are. They are. People but are they afraid. Are. It's not just, I'm not, it, it, this is a problem. This is. But I'm just saying people have always been afraid in certain sex parts of this country, man. Even before this time. I, I, I believe it's heightened and worse now. Right, because we don't have Absolutely. leadership that's that's calming. We don't have a calming leader. But under Obama, thing, crazy things were happening. We just had a calming leader. So those of us that don't have to deal with it on a day-to-day on the front lines don't feel it. Okay. Now those of us with a voice and a pen or you know an article to write or great jobs are feeling it the same way that people <laughs> felt it. That didn't have a voice. But, if Ebro, if you go back 15 or 20 years, while there was still a deep underbelly of racism in our country, mm-hmm. um, we were we appeared to be, and we actually, I believe, were slowly going in one direction. Mm-hmm. In the last 15 years, post-Tea Party America, we are now, there is a huge sect of people constantly rallying and using yes. people's problems to galvanize yes. more racists. Yes. Nazi Germany wasn't filled to the brim with Nazis before Hitler came to power. He brought them to power by giving them things, promising things, yes. and then said, "Oh, by the way, you know who to blame? It's the Jews." Yes. This is a sim- we this tactic is not far off from what we're seeing. So that's why I say the idea right, of him but, being but out of office saying, is terrifying. It, okay, but I, you're talking to somebody right now that in 1991 and 1992, I had race riots at my high school where they said on spray painted on the wall swastikas and put Ebro uh, sucks Damien's nigger D on the Whoa. wall when and on the wall in the in the main gathering area. This is something that I went through. And when I was on the radio as a 16, 17 year old kid, white supremacists and rednecks would call my job and call me a nigger. That happened to me. I have video of me on the news when they bashed in the windows of my car and the FBI came to my job because it was a hate crime and I had to mm. register this thing as a hate crime. It's not new, bro. But don't, but just because it's not it's new. Not, all I'm saying is, is it's not new. A lot of people, and that's why I said earlier on this show, America's beautiful little bubbles being burst, and I'm enjoying it because it's time for people to stop acting like this is new. Nobody's afraid of racists. If y'all going to stop, listen, in Long Island right now, there are neighborhoods right now where black people can't buy a home. Absolutely. Yeah, this is facts. In New Jersey, in Westchester, right now, we have the most segregated public school system in the country in New York City, bro. Yep. This is not, nobody's afraid of racists, man. Nobody's afraid of Donald Trump. We're already going through it right now. It's just a lot of us are privileged and have money. And so those of us that have a voice, we don't have to deal with it every day. But there are people dealing with it every day. It's not new. Nobody's afraid. And unless they're going to put Donald Trump in jail or take a lot of money, you'll never get respect from the population ever again for this position. If you let the Supreme Court justice get through, you'll never get respect. So those of you good white people that have a voice... I'm glad to see y'all getting mad wanting to punch somebody in the face. Because other people been mad, bro. Been mad. It's not new. That's the most frustrating piece. They want action. Y'all was driving down Canal Street the other day. Canal Street, Manhattan. Rush hour on Friday on my way to on the reggae tip. I saw a Jeep Cherokee driving down the street. You know those little flags that you hang on the window and you roll the window up and it's got the little white arm flag and so the window holds the flag above your car? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not like a permanent flag or like a red, you know, the one that you roll the window up and the flag like sticks there. Yeah. It said Trump, make America great again. Dude driving down Canal Street. Now, why would you do that, bro? You're trying to antagonize people. It's not even a permanent flag that stays on your car. It's the one that you just take off the window joint. 
that you just put there to drive down rush hour on Canal Street to see if you could piss somebody off and get it cracking. Yep, mm-hmm. that's right. That's where we're at right now, man. It's happening right now. Nobody's afraid of you racist. Nobody's concerned. We Black people been having problems with the police. We been getting killed. My dad was in and out of jail, fought the police. Black Panthers couldn't get jobs. People been speaking up for black people for a long time. This been happening. I hear everything you're saying. I just don't un- fundamentally understand the sentiment of that makes it not scary or not a problem. <laughs> it's no, still it's scary already been scary. And a problem. It's already oh, it's not but, more, it's not going to be more scary, bro. But, but Ebro, it's just going to be on Front Street, and the people that yeah. haven't been deal with it, they're going to be scared. Right. But there are even but you're including a lot of people in that. There are a lot of even black people that while they deal with racism on certain levels have not seen what you went through in 1992 because they grew up in 2010. Right, it's going to be a different experience. You for went them. through that and it's in and it's it, great well, and valuable that we have people guess, like your experience. Guess but- what little guess what little 20 year old, 21 year old you should have listened to the elders when they was talking to you. <laughs> well, you're going to learn today. You should you should ju- run your Googles. God, was, were you supposed but to make me Googles. less scared? Was this conversation <laughs> supposed to make me less scared? Nah. I don't feel less scared. <laughs> I'm, been, nah, I'm just saying, hey, hey, no, don't be, af- right, don't be afraid been now. For the people who've been privileged, now you're going to see what a lot of people who haven't trusted the system for a long time have been seeing. Yes. That's what he's saying now. So, yeah, you're going to be intimidated because it's like now it's affecting you and the people who, like you said, have a voice and have money and have privilege. But a lot of people, and unless Trump goes to jail or his money gets taken and people will never trust that office, anybody who has not been treated fairly in this country already doesn't trust the government. That's the side I mainly stand on when I'm like, I don't want to vote. I don't trust none of it. I don't trust. It's, it's all a fraud to me. But we did. Trump jumps in, pulls up the curtain with his bad acting skills because all the politicians have been acting all this time. And now everybody's like, whoa, this thing is a fraud. It's been a fraud. Trump is not going to go anywhere. He's going to complete his term. You know they're going to protect him. And then hopefully we can get somebody next term. And and I hopefully I, if somebody can stand up against and him. all and where this started a long time ago was me saying that even if that happens, while I would feel much better if Kamala Harris becomes the next president or whoever it is becomes the next president, what scares me is the idea that now you have this person who's become this important leader for all these other disenfranchised, ignorant, angry white people mm-hmm. who then galvanizes and makes the racism that much worse, right. that much no, more. No, I understand. It's, I understand it's, your it will point, build Mr. more. And, yeah, and I actually yeah. think you're right because for a long time, it wasn't okay. And a lot of people thought that they couldn't be open about their racism and now they're proud. Well, and that makes and and that makes and now the they children have a leader. but the, those people had children, right? And so when a lot of those racists had children but the racist parents didn't feel emboldened, they had children who may have heard little bits of the racism right, right, but right. they grew up in a world where they're like, yeah, my parents would say crazy things occasionally but like I don't believe that. Right. But now if your 30-year-old parents love Donald Trump and they're emboldened, well now their children are just br- out and out racist. Mm-hmm. That is impactful, Mm -hmm. that we will see that difference not for five years, not for 10 years, for 60 years. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need to act, to Ebro's point, things like Kavanaugh getting through, all these pieces are so important for the long-term history, even if Trump leaves office. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. You guys, America wants this country to be white, man. It always has. The people who founded this country wanted this for white people. People with a certain look and a certain complexion, man. They always have. It's not new. It's not new, man. The girl, like, we've been joking all morning about the Jewish Mexican lady who had the white supremacist sign on rest on her arm sitting behind Kavanaugh. Who people are it's saying was holding a white supremacist. Allegedly. Allegedly. Fam, Allegedly. You, know how long, you know how long she had that her hand resting like that, Rosenberg? For as long as she was resting her arm st- standing behind him? She was throwing that sign the whole time, bro. Yeah, but if there's I, a certain look, bro, there's a certain look, and it's not a black African look that they want in this country. They do not want brown, dark people in this country, man. This is a white supremacist movement that's happening, man. 
and it's happening in front of all of our eyes. The racism has always been there. It's just on Front Street, and it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening in Israel. It's happening all over Europe. It's happening. And I I wish I could make y'all feel better. And I could joke and crack jokes all morning if y'all want to. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm always on this page. You know, Laura Rosenberg, Shani, they'll tell you. I'm always on this page. Mm -hmm. You know. (laughs) Always. But it's not good. It's going to, if to Rosenberg's point, if Trump having a television channel and being able to, or or an internet network or whatever he's going to have post-presidency is worse than what we have right now, then I guess so be it. That's going to feel worse that you got to look at it every day or it's going to be, you know, mainstream. But for many people, the image of Eurocentric beauty and that defining imagery has been the image of white supremacy already, bro. Just people think you got to when you got what was the Oscar so white and the whole hashtag and all that. And you got to fight to have representation at the Grammys and the Oscars and on television. And you got to fight to have people who look like you and do all of this other work. People been going through that for decades, man. In this country. It's always been a thing. Yeah, there's there's such there's so many layers though, because Oscar's so white is one thing, and kids in places that never um, knew or understood that racism was right there, maybe being scared when they go to school is different. You know what I'm saying? Wanting to have an award show reward artists is is one thing, and it's very important. Mm-hmm. But then there's like way more practical day to day racism. That we're looking right, at. But like we talk about representation on this show, right? We talk about the power of representation and seeing people who look like you and the power of Obama being president and young white children growing up and and thinking it's okay to have leadership that doesn't look like them. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Right? People don't think that that's a big deal. That's a huge that is the huge. deal. Facts. That's the deal. Well, and also part of the deal, in my opinion, and one, it's something that a lot of us leave out and that Obama was so good at, whether we think he was, you know, talked about race enough, right. was the fact that... He, he tried to avoid it, man. But he, but by nature, who he was as a person, as mm-hmm. a biracial American with a black family, mm-hmm. who that has so much impact. Mm-hmm. We almost get caught up so much turning this into what ends up being pro-black conversations and white conversations and we don't spend a lot of time being interracial mm-hmm. which is no, ultimately obama, what this doesn't is doesn't obama have a white a white sister or brother or something and they're married to a hawaiian or something like that like yeah, his family is super exactly multi-ethnic but they are live that they are completely multi-ethnic which is the lens that he see things f- through mm-hmm. and i just think a lot of times we even on the quote unquote good side here don't always spend our time focusing on that part. We talk about issues, but do we practice it? Do we really make an effort to show people that we are all the same? Or that that's the part that concerns me. And that's another reason that I miss Obama so much. He brought so many people together in that regard, even though he wasn't speaking about race. It's just what he meant to all of us. But now the bubble's being popped right in front of our eyes, ladies and gentlemen. All of that to say that if you ain't woke to what's really happening and you're not paying attention, um, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. Nike done signed Colin Kaepernick, big commercial rollout. That's sending people to a different place, man. The biggest sports brand. Would you say Nike's the biggest sports brand in the world? Yes, I would. Yes. Has signed the guy who got blackballed from the NFL for taking a knee in protest of police brutality. A specific black issue Mm -hmm. has been signed to a commercial 
and the face of an entire campaign and a clothing line with the largest sports brand in the world. And the commercial is going to play during the Thursday night football game tonight. And now a corporation sees the value in standing next to what black people find important. Exactly. And that feels effing good. And I'm happy. You sound great. <laughs> I hope I could be this happy. Um, I'm very... Can't do it. I'm happy, guys. Yeah, I'm also going to grab, sit on the couch. <laughs> 